Well, good morning, Rock Church. How's everybody doing? Good? Good. It's good to see you guys. I hope you're having a great day and uh, that everything's going well for you. And hope you have enjoyed your summer. My name's Josh. Uh, if you happen to be new with us, I'm one of the pastors here and uh, excited to be able to teach God's word this morning. Uh, whether you're here in person or whether you're watching online, uh, definitely just uh, thankful that you're with us. And we are doing this series called Mavericks. And, and the whole idea with Mavericks is uh, this idea of this, this huge wave uh, that's in Mavericks, California, and the um, kind of unorthodox people who are willing to surf that wave. And we're kind of using that as our springboard to talk about how God is pushing a huge wave out in front of you. Are we willing to be unorthodox, be an un, uncommon person, and jump on that wave and ride that wave with him? All right. So that's what we kind of started with last week. And we really started talking about Samson and Samson's strength and, um, and, you know, about what made him weak and what made him strong and stuff like that. Today, we're going to be talking about courage. Um, how many of y'all have ever needed a little bit of extra courage? You face something, yeah, and you're just like, man, I need some courage. I think this is a message this morning that, that can, again, will really hit and touch most of us, because there's always points in our life where we're like, man, I need a little more courage. I, I need a little bit of courage to, to fight this thing that I need to fight, or I need a little more courage to leave this thing that I need to leave, or I need some courage to, uh, to take on this new thing that is coming into my life, or I need some courage to, to make it through this difficult season. So we're really going to talk about courage, and we're going to really kind of narrow it down to some specific areas. But when I think about Nate Dorman, I think about this video, the little bit of time I've been able to share with him, um, I, I see a man of courage. And, and uh, you know, he's a guy that took off when he was young, um, just out of high school, stuff like that. He took off and he started chasing this dream of being a professional surfer and doing it in a way that he could reach people for Christ. Um, now, his dream has taken him places like Hawaii, New Zealand, South Africa. How many of you all right now thinking, dude, I need a dream like that, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've often said, Nate, you need me to come and interview you or, or encourage you or anything? You know what I mean? But, but he's out there and he's doing it. And, and although that seems cool and we'd all go, dude, that's awesome. Think about it. I remember the first time I talked to Nate, he was heading towards Hawaii. And I said, all right, when you get there, where are you staying? He said, I don't know. So what do you mean you don't know? He goes, most of the time I just fly into these places. I know there's a surf competition there. I get there and I meet some people and eventually we figure out a way to get some lodging. Um, and that's kind of his life. That's a, that's a radical, unconventional way of doing it, and which takes great courage. Nate's not the only one who's had courage that's had to do something new. We could go into a bunch of illustrations, but I think the place I should go to is just back to the beginnings of the New Testament, and we see the disciples uh, who had great courage. Now, when I say disciples, let's just narrow that down a little bit and make sure we're all understanding what we mean when we say the term disciple, okay? When Jesus was walking on the earth, he uh, came across some men, and he called them to follow him. And when he called them to follow him, they became his disciples. It's guys, maybe you recognize some of these names. Guys like Peter and Andrew. Uh, guys like James and John. Maybe you've heard of a guy named Matthew, all right? There's these different guys that Jesus said, I want you to follow me. And with great courage, they did. All right, and uh, so I want us to just to dive into their life a little bit this morning, and I want us to, to kind of see their courage and, and, and learn from it. And the biggest thing I think we're going to see when we look at these disciples is we're going to see their courage in the way that they followed and their courage in the way that they led. All right, so do me a favor. If you have a Bible, go ahead and open it up. If not, it'll be on the screens. Maybe you got a, a phone app, anything like that. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 4 today. 
And when we go to Matthew chapter 4, uh, we're going to be in verse 18. All right, so Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. If you don't have a Bible, we say this often, but, but I just want to remind you again, is you can go and you can download the Rocks app. Go, uh, go to your app store, Rock C, uh, look up Rock C3, and it'll come up. And you can download that, and there's a Bible right there. All right, and if you open up that Bible, this is the scripture that you would probably see this morning. It'd be in front of you, okay? So um, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through 20. Uh, This is how it starts, and this is how it reads. It says, One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who's also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once, and they followed him, all right? So you've got this story about some guys that all they've done all of their life has been fishermen. Every morning they wake up, they prepare the nets, they go out, they fish, they come back at the end of the day, and they clean their nets, they get ready for the next day. That's these guys, Peter and Andrew. That, that's who they are. They are fishermen, and Jesus shows up, and he says, I want to give you a new way. I want to I show you something different. And he invites them at that point to make a change in their life. And they had to have the courage to make the change. And the first change is they had to follow him. Look at what it says here. Again, it's verse 19. Where the whole sermon is basically out of verse 19. It says, Jesus called to them, come, follow me. Come and follow me. Do something that, that you maybe never have done before. All right, and so these disciples, for them to follow him, they had to have a couple things in place. The first thing they had to do is they had to leave. They had to leave the safety of the life they knew to go on a new adventure. All right, guys, I, I experienced that for the first time yesterday. All right, just to let you know, got a call from a couple guys in the church. They said, hey, we're going fishing. Would you like to go? I'm like, yeah, actually it works into my schedule. Let's do it. So I jumped in the boat with them, and we headed out to sea. It was cool, all right? Now I've fished around, I've been in the inlets, all that, but we're heading out, all right? Who all's ever been like deep sea fishing out when you can't see the seashore anymore, all right? So that's where I was heading yesterday for the first time in my life, all right? And we are leaving the land. And as we're leaving the land, all of a sudden we get about 10 miles out. I'm like, how do we know we're 10 miles? They said, can you barely see it? I'm like, I think I can barely see the land. They said, yep, and we're hitting the waves and it's all great. And then all of a sudden, the boat stops running. And like, I'm thinking, this isn't good. And, and the guys I'm with, they, they're like, oh, we'll figure this out. And all of a sudden they're diving under the boat and they're messing with some electric. Yeah, touch that wire to this wire. See if that works. And all of a sudden it fires up. And I'm like, okay, we're good. All right, we got to go a little further. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I look at the other guy with me. I said, isn't the land back that way? And didn't our boat just break down? And we're going to leave the safety of this seashore and we're going to go out further? Uh, Yeah, we have to because that's where the big fish are. (laughs) I'm like, I'm okay with little fish. But we had to leave. We had to leave the, the safety of that land. We had to leave that area. When Jesus looked at these disciples, he said, I want you to follow me. And the first decision they had to make was, am I willing to leave? Am I willing to leave the safety of my environment? Am I willing to leave the life I've always known? Am I willing to leave the things that have been a part of my life since childhood? Am I willing to leave and try something different? It says the disciples, Jesus said, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left. They left their nets. They said, all right, let's do this. If I'm going to have the courage to follow Christ, I guess it starts with being willing to leave. Now, this isn't the first place in Scripture we see this. We see it other places. We see it with a a guy named Elisha. And there was this prophet, and his name was Elijah. And Elijah was this famous prophet. He was coming towards the end of his life, and he needed somebody else to kind of take over. So he went, and he approached this man named Elisha. And when he went to Elisha, he walked up, and he put his cloak around him, basically saying, I need you to follow me. I need you to kind of 
Start being a prophet. I need you to kind of take over. And Elisha, when he felt this calling, he had a decision to make. And what's interesting about his decision is he said to Elijah, let me say goodbye. Right? And basically what he was saying is when I first heard that, I'm like, does that mean like he was like, I don't really want to follow you yet. That's not the goodbye he was saying. He was saying, I'm done. And it says in scripture that he actually took his oxen, he took his, his plow, he took his tools that he was making a living by, and he put them in a, in a place and he burned them all. He burned it up and he said, if I'm going to follow you, Elijah, then I have to leave my past life. I've got to let it be in the past. There is no going back. That takes great courage. There's another story out there. It's about a guy named Hernan Cortez. Um, I don't know if you've heard about him. He's a, uh, he was a um, guy explorator, if that's the right word. He, he went and he discovered things. And he left Spain uh, back in the 1400s. He's the one who discovered the island of Espanol, which is basically Haiti and Dominican Republic. From there, he set out and he uh, explored Q, uh, Cuba. And from Cuba, he went on to Mexico. When he got to Mexico, the men with him, they were encountering some difficulties and they were thinking about going back. And Hernan Cortez went out and he burned the ships. He just burned them down. And what he was saying by doing that is we have made a decision to go into this land. We've made a decision. There is now no turning back. My challenge to you this morning is this. Do you have the courage to follow Christ? Because if we have the courage to follow Christ, then we have to be willing to leave some things behind. We have to be willing to leave some old lifestyles. We have to be willing to leave some bad habits. We have to be willing to leave some things of comfort. We have to be willing to leave maybe some addictive behaviors. And you might be sitting there thinking, man, man, this addiction's got the best of me. But there's a point in your life where you're going to have to say, no, I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to leave it in the past and let it be there. The disciples left their nets. And then once they left, then they just looked to Jesus. Here's the great thing about this story. It says, come follow me and I will show you. Guys, here's the great thing about, about the courage of the disciples, all right? They were not having to do this on their own. They weren't saying, all right, if I have the courage to follow Christ, um, uh, he calls me into a life, and then he goes, okay, good luck, and leaves. That wasn't what Jesus was doing at all. Jesus said, I'm challenging you to have the courage to follow me. Leave your nets. They left their nets, and he said this, then I will show you. Okay, here's the crazy thing. When we got out on the water yesterday, I, I'd never done anything like that before. And when we set out in the deep, we're out 25, 26 miles, all right? I, I'm sitting there going, I don't know what to do. But I've got three guys around me who have done it a lot. And I just start watching them. And as I start watching them, they're like, all right, here's, here's how you put the bait on. I don't want to make it sound like I'm a sissy. I know how to, like, bait a hook if I'm bluegill fishing, okay? I know how to put a night crawl on there, but I've never done this where you're taking a fish and sticking it through a hook, you know what I mean? So I'm watching these guys and learning how to do that, and, and then, you know, I'm thinking, how do I cast this big rig, you know? And I'll see it go, bloop. I'm like, right, I can do that, you know? And let it, he's like, oh, oh, you gotta watch the line there. Don't let too much out. So I'm, I'm watching these guys. I'm learning from these guys, all right? And then all of a sudden, one of them hooks into a shark, all right? And, and I'm watching him reel it in, and the next I know my line's pulling in with it, all right? So I'm learning a valuable lesson. When somebody says fish on, get your line out of the water, right? You know, I'm learning from these guys. A little bit later, all of a sudden, we've got a, a stationary reel, and it gets hit, and you hear it, zzz, you know what I mean? Cool sound. I'd never heard it before. Might be the first time I've ever made it publicly, too. Um, <laughs> but when that happens, Bevan's like, hey, hey, grab that line. So I grab it, and poof, I hit it, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my. You know what I mean? It's a big old fish. It's a huge fish. For the next 20, 30 minutes, I'm fighting this fish. And here's the honest truth. I have no clue what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I'm just, I got a rod in my hand. I'm like, am I holding it the right way? Because I felt like weird. You know what I mean? Like, is the reel supposed to be under? Is it supposed to be over? You know? He's like, no, you're good there. He goes, all right, now lean back. All right? He goes, you feel it loosen a little bit? Lean forward, reel, and then kick it right back. Fortunately for me, in that moment, I had these men in my life who were able to help me do my best to catch a whopper. I'm guessing it was probably a 30-foot shark. 
because I really never saw it. I fought it for 20, 30 minutes and eventually it bit the line. But if it was this big, we know a true fish story would be this big. Since I never saw it and thought it was that big, it must have been 30 foot. But anyway, for 30 minutes, I had a time of my life. And the beauty of it was, is I had these guys in my life who were showing me, teaching me, coaching me. Guys, I'm trying to make sure you catch this analogy. Jesus didn't look at these guys. He said, leave what you have and follow me. And they said, okay. And he said, good, you're on your own. No, he said, I will show you. I will show you how to do life. I will show you how to follow me. And guys, he says the same thing to us right now. See, here's, here's the truth. Some of us, we don't have the courage to truly follow Christ because we're afraid. How do I give up that in my past? How do I, how do I live in a new life when that old life is, how do I? Jesus says, don't worry, I'll show you. And he continues to show us through his presence in our life, through his word, the way he speaks to us through the Bible, and through people. See, here's the beauty. God puts, God, God puts his people in our lives to show us how to follow Christ. And when we start looking towards people like that, then we can leave that old lifestyle and walk in it. Let me, let me talk to you guys just for a second. I know there's probably a couple of you in here struggling with addictions. I have guys' numbers in my phone who have come to me and said, if you ever encounter somebody who's got an addictive habit, they're trying to break free, please give them my number. I've been there, and I want to help them through the process. We have some married couples who have, who have um, helped people fight through addictions, and they have said, please, if anybody comes to you, give them my number. We have a, a, a doctor who, who works at a detox center. He said, if you ever have somebody who, who needs help, please connect them with me. What they're saying is, I'm here to walk it through with people. We have a couple in our church who, who has said, if there's anybody who needs marriage help, please connect them with us because we want to walk that through with them. What I'm trying to say is, you don't do life alone. Courage is being willing to leave something and then looking towards people saying, hey, I need some help. Do you have the courage to follow Christ? Especially when times get tough. Because here's the reality is the disciples, they were going to encounter some difficult times. The, the disciples, they were going to come up with some, some tough stuff. And we see that early in the Bible too. We see the Israelites, they came across some tough stuff and they had a hard time following you see, the Israelites, they had been prisoners of the Egyptians for 400 years. And then this guy named Moses comes onto the scene. And when Moses comes onto the scene, he, he looks at these Israelites. He says, all right, guys, it's time for us to be set free from the Pharaoh. It's time for us to no longer be slaves of the Egyptians. God has called me to, to lead you all towards the promised land. I need you to follow me. And immediately the Israelites are like, ah, we don't know if we can follow you. Are you sure God's really on your side? And then all of a sudden, God starts showing miracle after miracle after miracle, saying, yes, this is what's going to happen. And finally, after the last miracle, the Pharaoh goes, oh, okay, yeah, get, y'all can leave. The, Egypt, or the Israelites are like, yeah, let's go. And they all follow Moses until they get to the Red Sea. And they encounter their first difficult thing. And at the first difficult thing they come to, do you know what they say? Let's go back. Let's go back to that old life. Let's go back to being slaves. Moses is like, don't you guys remember all the power that God displayed? He's going to do it again. And all of a sudden, the Red Sea parts, and they walk across on dry ground. They get over to the other side. They celebrate. Everything's great until they encounter another difficulty. And they encounter another difficulty, and you know what they say? Let's go back. Let's go back because that's just too difficult have courage to be a disciple of Christ, have courage to follow Christ, even in the difficulties. See, these disciples of Jesus, Peter, John, James, Andrew, they're just common, ordinary men who said, okay, we're gonna follow you, we're gonna leave our stuff, we're gonna watch you and see how you do life. And then they encountered the difficulty, and the difficulty they had was Jesus said, um, guys, I'm getting ready to die. Oh, no, no, that's not, that's not true, is it? Jesus said, yeah, no, I'm, 
my time on earth is coming to a close. Next thing you know, he's arrested in a garden. He's put on trial. He's beaten. He's put on a cross and he's crucified. And at that moment, the disciples ran. They ran back towards their old life. Why? Because they were on this side of the cross. Let me try to explain this. On this side of the cross, they were only in the follow mold. And as they were in the follow mold, they just, they weren't ready. They hadn't had that experience with God that put them on this side of the cross. And while they were over there, they just saw the difficulty. They saw this is difficult. The cross hadn't become a defining moment in their life yet. But once they encountered Jesus on the cross and then the resurrected Jesus and they started seeing the cross as the reality of of this is how life can be had is that they saw the cross differently and the cross became a defining moment in their life. And when the cross became a defining moment in their life, they got on this side of the cross. And once they were on this side of the cross, they were able not only to follow God, but also lead others to him. It took great courage for them to get onto this side of the cross because they had to believe that the cross was the defining moment in their life where they said, I need Jesus. And when I accept him as my savior, when I realize my need for him and the power of his resurrection in my life, now I can not only follow, but I can also lead. And guys, there's great courage for them to get to that point. And I wanna challenge this, can we get to that same point? Can we get to the point where we're not just following but we're also leading. Let's look back at the scripture again. Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. How to fish for people. Jesus was telling the disciples, man, I I got something much bigger out there for you. Just as I was in the boat and we decided to head out in the deep sea, those guys are saying, hey, there's something much bigger out there. We got to go out there. And what Jesus is saying here is, follow me, I'm going to show you something much greater in life. And when they got on this side of the cross, they started then leading. And that's where we see the disciples from, from after the cross through the rest of scripture, we see them doing things that are extraordinary. We see common, ordinary men who are changing the world because the cross had become a defining moment in their life. What do we see out of them? We see them leading, and the way we see them leading is the way they went, they were able to go, and the way they were able to disciple. And they had to, had to go. Let me read another scripture. It might be somewhat familiar to you if you've been in church very long. It's Matthew chapter 28. It's verse 19 and 20. It said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you, and be sure of this, I am always with you even to the end of the age. Scripture starts by saying, therefore, go. All right, if you were to look really at the etymology of that, if you were to look back into the Greek, what that means is, as you are going. All right, so it is now time to go. It went, you went from being a follower to now, now it's time to have the courage to be the leader. And to do that, you've got to go. You've got to go where the big fish are, as I said yesterday. You've got to go to where the people are, and you've got to make a difference. And guys, that's risky. It's risky. Let's just admit it. To say, I want to go and I want to lead people, that's risky. It's risky. Uh, to transplant a family to South Carolina, okay? It's been awesome, but when you got kids in middle school, that's, that's risky, but it's worth it. When, when I think about uh, our church and I think about the risk we take when we jump after this new property that, that we uh, went after there at the corner of Mill Pond and 501, that's risky, but it's worth it. I don't remember if I've shared this with everybody or not, um, but we did uh, got in touch with the Department of Transportation. There's 25,000 cars a week, or excuse me, 25,000 cars a day that drive by our facility now. 25,000 cars a day. That means there's a lot of people, all right? So, so we're willing to take the uh, risk. We're willing to go there, but it is risky because it's, it's different. Doing church the way we do church, 
Honestly, that's a little risky. You know, it, it, if we were just to kind of play the, the center of the field, you know what I mean? Like if we were just to say, let's just try to have base hits. Let's just try to, you know, hit it down the middle. Let's try not to be a little, a little too dangerous on one side or a little bit too dangerous on the other. If we were just like, let's just play like this, then we would have the potential to reach more people in this area. Why? Because there's more people. But when you start doing things on the edge, when you start living on the edge and you start saying, let's try to target young men, let's try to target this generation, let's try to be very specific in going after people who, who maybe do not have a relationship with God, then it kind of narrows the number of people who can come to your church or who at least, I don't want to say can, but feel like they like that style of church. Do you see what I'm saying? It's risky. But isn't it worth it? Isn't it worth it to know that, that people are being set free? Yeah. I, just, I can't go into all their stories, but I can just say over the last couple weeks, some people who have come to know Jesus as their Savior, one day I'd love for them to be able to tell you their story. It is just crazy life change, guys. And it's because as a church, we're saying, let's be a little risky and let's go where maybe somebody else wouldn't go. Is it worth it? Yeah. Because isn't it worth it setting people free? Am I alone? You with me? Is it worth it? To do that, you gotta go though. We gotta go. And when we go, we make disciples. We make disciples. That second part of that verse says, go and make disciples. You, you've got to, we've got to disciple people. Now, now, when I say that, maybe if I was asked it this way, it'd even make it a little bit more confusing. Who are you discipling? Like, if I was to ask you that question, who are you discipling? Who do you have the courage to lead? Who do you have the courage to disciple? You, you might say, well, I don't know if I understand that, and that really sounds scary. How would I disciple somebody? The easiest way for me to explain it is, what did Jesus show you? Because Jesus said, follow me, and I will show you. So what did Jesus show us? He showed us how he invited some people into his life. Yeah, he preached the gospel to the masses, but he discipled a small group of men. And he did it by inviting them into, their, into his life. And when you invite somebody into your life, you're basically saying, hey, be a part of my life and let me show you who Jesus Christ is. So that's the reason I gotta ask again, who are you discipling? Who have you invited into your life that you're willing to share God's word with. And you might say, well, I, I, I don't know if I can do that. Well, it probably means, and this isn't bad, okay? I'm not saying anything bad, but it probably means that you're on this side of the cross, okay? Meaning you, you're, it's not that the cross isn't important to you, but I'm at that point where it, it's like, man, I just need to be following. But Jesus is saying, I want the cross to redefine your life to now it's not that I'm just following because we're always gonna be followers, but now I'm also leading. And I really want to challenge you, we need to get on this side of the cross where we can start discipling people. And it's not rocket science, okay? It's not big programs at church. It's not having 15,000 Sunday school classes, all right? It's not having all these different things that, oh, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. And we have a bunch of people real busy. No, discipleship is a man inviting some men into his life and showing them who Jesus is. Discipleship is a woman inviting some women into her life saying, let me show you who uh, Jesus is. Discipleship is, is a, a father looking at his kids and his, and his wife saying, let me show you who Jesus is. And that's scary because your kids know the truth about you, right? They see your faults. So let's just be honest. Discipleship is... Messy. It's messy. That's okay. It was messy with Jesus. I mean, think about it. Peter and them looking, making mistakes, and it was messy. But Jesus didn't give up on Peter. He said, no, let me show you how to fish. Let me show you how to live. So men, 
Who can you invite into your life? Ladies, who can you invite into your life? Maybe as a husband and wife, what couples can you invite into your life? And you might say, all right, I'm ready to do that. Where do I sign up and who are you going to give me as a, to, to lead? No one. Let me make sure you don't miss the point here. This isn't a church program. I'm not trying to sell a church program to you this morning. I'm just trying to look at scripture and saying the disciples had courage to use their lives to make a difference. And what I'm challenging you to do, what I'm challenging myself to do, is invite people in. You go and find three or four people, or if you're a couple, go find three or four couples and invite them in and start discipling them and taking them closer to the Lord. Scary, risky. Do you need courage to do that? Yeah. But you've got all you need because we can see how the other disciples did it. And it's dangerous. It's dangerous, but it's worth it. Let me read you a little quote. It came from a book that came out several years ago. It says this, the most critical issue facing Christians is not abortion. It's not pornography. It's not the disintegration of the family, moral absolutes, the internet, drugs, racism, sexuality, or school prayer. The critical issue today is dullness. We have lost our astonishment. The good news is no longer good news. It's okay news. Christianity is no longer life-changing. It's life-enhancing. It's as if Jesus doesn't change people into wide-eyed radicals anymore. I don't want that kind of Christianity. I'm ready for a Christianity that ruins my life. That captures my heart and makes me uncomfortable. I want to be filled with an astonishment which is so captivating that I am considered wild and unpredictable and dangerous. I want to live dangerously. It was written by a guy who invited a bunch of men into his life and he discipled them. Who will you disciple? Let's just finish it up by saying this. What side of the cross are you on this morning? Are you at that point in your life where you're like, man, I need to leave some things because I need to follow Christ? And if that's you this morning, we're going to start singing a couple songs, and I want to invite you to respond. And if you need to leave some bad habits, if you need to leave some bad attitudes, if you need to leave some addictions, if you need to leave that old life, then I invite you just to throw it down and allow the cross to be a defining moment in your life. Maybe you're here this morning, you've never responded to Christ's gift of salvation. This morning, you can look to the cross and you can say, Jesus, I need you. And you can let that be that defining moment in your life where you become not just a follower, but now I'm ready to lead as well. I'm gonna look to somebody who hasn't had that defining moment in their life and I'm gonna try to disciple them. And if you're here this morning and you realize, man, I'm not really leading to anybody. Maybe you're a dad, man. Maybe it's time to start leading your kids and leading your wife. Maybe you're a lady and you know you've got some moms that you hang out with or some ladies or some neighbors or whatever. Maybe, maybe it's time to invite them into your life and show them who Jesus Christ is. Maybe you're a guy and you just need to be willing to say, hey, I'm gonna meet with three guys every morning or one morning a week or whatever and I'm just gonna study God's word with them. And you're gonna go, I don't know all the answers yet. I'm a preacher. I can guarantee you I got a lot more questions about this than I do answers. I read a scripture, I go, I don't get that. We ain't, all, we ain't gonna get every word of it until we get to heaven. So don't let knowledge stop you. Be willing to disciple people because Jesus will give you the knowledge the more you dig into this. I want you to do me a favor. Let's stand together. And let's, uh, let's go into a time of response. Will you pray with me? Jesus, this morning, God, I thank you for today. I thank you for the cross. And God, I, I pray just a sincere prayer, Father, that you would take common and ordinary people 
like the disciples, like myself, like those of us here. And you would help us to have the courage to follow you and then the courage to also lead. God, help us to respond this morning in your son's name. There's communion right and left. There's people to pray with you. We'd love to help you respond. Let's worship.